Oh boy, he really did. He's really calling. You think that's him? It was supposed to be our surprise guest, but everybody knows that he's a hardcore legend, a man, Jerry, that you have battled with over the years for decades. It's been a couple years since you guys have been in the ring together, but you'll be squaring off uh, this weekend. And Jerry, I know you're going to be upset with me, but he is probably uh, just up there when it comes to guys that I enjoy watching. He is Terry Funk. Terry, how are you today? Well, it depends on how I do on this conversation with this asshole I'm talking to. Oh, please. Are, are you gonna, is that the way you're going to start this conversation like that? It's the only way to start. you got to hate in the world of wrestling. Man, oh, man. And, and first of all, Glenn, well, thank you, I guess I could say thank you for being on our, our podcast here. I understand. You, you don't do many podcasts, do you, Terry Funk? Uh, the only thing wrong with your podcast, no, I don't, is it stinks. Really? Wow. Yeah, it stinks. So is that, I mean, is, is that your opinion, or have it's you heard a, that from people that listen to it's it? It's got a god-awful odor. Have you looked around and smelled something dead? Jerry, I think that's you. Now, please, wait a minute. That's you, Gary Lawler. It's your ass that stinks, Lawler. (laughs) Okay, okay. Not mine. Okay. Uh, It always has, too. In the ring, too, Lawler. Okay. You want to start jacking around and talking about stuff that, uh, oh, what a great time we're going to have. What a great ass kicking you're going to get. Okay. How do well, you, you like know, that, Lawler? I like, you like it so that, far. I like it so How far. Like it's, it? typical, it's typical. It's typical. Terry, so you like you? Yeah, gonna get yeah, an ass kicking. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're gonna get one. Well, let That's me let me exactly just say. Right. It, it, what do you want been, to talk about now? Okay, I want to talk a little bit about what Glenn just said. It's been. Did you say it's been a couple of years since he and I were in the Funk and I were in the ring against each other? Yeah. It, I swear years. it was in it was in Jackson, Tennessee, yeah. and it seems to me like it was just like last week because I can remember it so vividly. We had a huge crowd at the Omen Arena in Jackson, Tennessee. Terry Funk and I squared off for the first time in I don't know how long. And it took about maybe, first of all, you came out and you insulted probably the greatest ring announcer ever in the history, Lance Russell. And you came out and said terrible things about Lance. What was up with He's that? He's a moron. What? He's a moron. That's why. Wow. He deserves to be exposed the same way that you need to be exposed as a chicken shit. I guess, is this language okay, Glenn? I mean, is he going to be able to get away with this kind of language? The host? No, that's all. I will not say another. I, you know, chicken shit is chicken shit. And okay. you're chicken that's, shit. That should be a t- so, but you're, you're, you're saying that Lance it's Russell. Perfectly who, fine. Lance to Russell. Say I just, chicken shit on the, the podcast. It's perfectly fine. Chicken shit is not considered a bad word. If you want me to tell you another word, no, it begins no. with MF. I'll tell you that one, and that's a bad word. Do you know what that word is? Yeah, let's don't. Of use course that. you do. Of course you do, because that's what you are. You are an MFER. Okay. Think about that. But well, let me get back to the fact that you call Tax your, your say- brain up here. You're saying Lance Tax Russell. Your brain. You're saying Lance Russell is a moron. I just had I just had lunch with Lance a couple of weeks ago at my restaurant here in Memphis. I didn't say I'm not <laughs> talking about Lance Russell. I'm talking about I'm not talking about Lance Russell. I just not said Lance Russell was a moron. Your you idiot announcer, your idiot announcer that listens to you and what you tell him to say about you, and that's all he says, and that's the only reason he's your announcer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you. Have you got that right? Okay, yeah. Well, then let's talk about you and me in that match in Jackson. You say you're going to give me an ass whipping in in the Carolinas coming up this weekend. What happened in that match in Jackson? If I can remember, if I can remember, it took about five minutes into the match, and you're going to the back. You're bringing out you're bringing out a garbage can full of brooms and shovels and mops and all of this sort of stuff to use as weapons. And and still you got set on fire at the end of the match. Do you remember that? I was going I was going to clean up after the murder, your goddamn murder. Oh brother! Wow. Jeez, but well, I remember being ringside and Terry, your hair was on fire. He probably doesn't remember that. That really pisses me off. I am still sitting here with one side of my hair shorter than the other. That really pissed me off. 
and that's the only reason I'm coming back. Yeah, well, speaking of, speaking of coming back, is it true? I mean, is this... You know, it takes it, an old man a long time to grow hair. Okay. It took me 70 goddamn years to grow the hair that I got on top of my head. And it took you seven and a half seconds to go ahead and burn the shit off. You're really intelligent, Lawler. That's really brave. That really has something to do with wrestling. Doesn't it? What does that have to do with wrestling? I don't know what you what is it? What have to That's what not a you? toe hole. That's not a headlock. That's not a body scissors. Body scissors. That's well, that's really the most stupid thing that I have ever had done to me in the world of wrestling. You ruined my hair in two seconds. You ruined my hair that I've grown for years and oh years. Oh my gosh. And Quit worrying years about Quit worrying to go about your hair. And have my beautiful hair, and then you kill it. My cat has my, my cat has coughed up better looking hair than you got. That's the stupidest thing that I've ever I've ever had done to me in my entire life. Well, I'm sorry. And it's not the first time. It's not the first time, you idiot. Well, what about the time? What about the time? What about the I'm time? I'm not talking to you, Lawler. I'm talking to the announcer when I said idiot, oh. because he's got to be an idiot. To have you on his show. Well, this is Jerry's show. That was the idiot speaking. What in the hell did I agree? Why did you call me up and say, will I come on your show? I said, Not Jer- Jerry. No, I said, Sh- this is bull- Jerry's show. Bullshit. Don't- Bullshit. I- well, t- Jerry Lawler, he thinks it's his show. No. The guy no. sitting next to you no. thinks it's his show. No, never. You think he's your friend? He's not your friend, Lawler. Okay. And I'm not either. I know that. Trust me, I know that. Let's 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 go back to what one of the things that started this decade long feud. What about that empty arena match that we had in Memphis, you and I? Do you remember that? You worried about your hair that like I said, I mean, I did you a favor to See that's burn how that bad your head. memory is. That's how bad your memory is. That what? wasn't a decade ago, that was I didn't God say damn it. I said a ago. decades that long. That was a century ago. Whenever I was in the ring with you, then. Yeah. Well, let's My talk about that for changed. a minute. What about when you broke? I'm a much meaner steps? man than I used to be. You're I'm meaner now than you were then. You bet I'm meaner now than I was then. Well, do you I've remember got a breaking surprise. up? I've got a surprise for you, Lawler. I've got a surprise for the Tennessee people, and it's going to surprise you. Well, do you remember breaking those steps that night in that? You want to try to guess what it is? No, I don't even care what it is. A surprise, a surprise from you is the fact that you're even supposedly coming out of retirement. Why do you tell everybody you retire all these times and then you keep coming back? Hello? Uh, I, I, well, because I, because every time, no, I'm not speechless. Because every time I retire, I mean it. It's the last time I'm going to step into the ring. Really? That's what it is. It's the last time I'm going to step into the ring. And then somebody every time comes I along. Say, some, somebody I'm comes along with wrestling. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. But then my love for the profession just enters my heart and soul again. And somebody always asks me, Terry, will you come back, please, one more time? And I can't turn them down. I can't turn them down. I know one of these times I'm going to go to heaven. I, I want you, you people to know that. I thought that the fact was that somebody comes along and says, would you please one more time come out and kick Jerry Lawler's ass? And that's what makes you get back in the ring. It's not that. It's just your love of the profession. No, it's my hate of Lawler. Oh, I see. Okay. It's my love of the profession and the hate of you. Why? That's what it Why is. over the years has this persisted? Why is the what's about the hatred for me? Why has that happened? You know when people ask me who's the who's the toughest guy you ever wrestled? Who's the most entertaining guy you ever wrestled? Who do you have your best matches with in your career? I always answer Terry Funk. Now why why for me is there such a hatred from you? Don't you know? No, I guess I don't. Don't you know? 
How's your eye, Terry? I'm trying. Don't you know why I hate you? I hate you because you think that you're a better in-ring performer than anyone else what? in the world today or as, as there ever has been that goes in the ring. That's because you have such a stinking ego. Oh. Well, that's true. That's, that's, that's true. And, and Glenn, I see yeah, what you're trying to You're damn right do. it is. That's true. You, you, He's got an ego. He's got a great, big, huge, fat ego. What about yours? Your that's ego, not the has, only got thing its own, fat, your ego has its own zip That's code. not the only thing that's fat. Your belly's fat, too. Yeah, okay. So I could use, lose a pound or two. Me too. Yeah. yeah what, about, you, what, what, do you, what do you want to talk about now? Well, well let's talk about the fact that this match is going to happen this coming weekend in the Carolinas. You got as your partners, this is a six man tag. But I don't even care about my partners. But my partners, my own son, Brian Christopher, and dangerous Doug Gilbert, the brother of Eddie Gilbert. And we're going to be going against you. And you got the Rock and Roll Express as your partners? Why, sure. I thought you didn't like the Rock and Roll Express either. I like the Rock and Roll Express. They're my illegitimate children. Do you know who created the Rock and Roll Express? Me. I put those two clowns together in Memphis, Tennessee. And now they're in the WWE Hall of Fame because of me. In, in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, Rock and Roll Express this past year. Am I in the WWE Hall of Fame? Of course you are. Am I really? <laughs> Is your, have you been hit on the head that many times, Terry Funk, that you can't remember <laughs> that you're in the WWE Hall of Fame? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's amazing. It is amazing. You're right. It is amazing. I'm in, I'm in every Hall of Fame in the country. Yes, you are, and you should be. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Look at you and two. And I should be. You two guys getting along. This is pro progressed. You guys look, look, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look what Lawler's done to me over the years. And your, your eye? I've had to worry about that guy. Oh, my eye. Glenn, my yeah. eye. Oh, my eye. My eye. My eye. My eye. Put it down now. The, man, the man's eye. Oh. I can't see. That, uh, that was from the empty arena that? match. Where why you, is I'll that? tell you why that why is. is because, that? because why is that? Because I had such amazing pain from from that injury, and I grabbed it and I said, "Oh my eye." Yeah. yeah, because and you what, broke the what steps. Is wrong with you, that? You, you broke the steps and broke up a big chunk of sharp shard of wood, and you were going to stab me with it. And somehow, when I blocked it, it stuck the stick in your own eye. You, the people for teams have seemed to forget about the fact that you were trying to stab me with the stick, and it backfired on you, and you stuck your own eye, and then you blamed me for trying to put your eye out. I still can't. You know, that's that's that's. You know, you sit there and talk about all of this crap. And shit and everything else and here you are you're the one that goes ahead and me i see bur blurry vision to this day and age and you did it to me and people wonder why that i truly dislike you that is why well what do you got to say about that go ahead say something about that yeah i got a couple of good you teammates you should blame yourself not me i got a couple of good teammates they're going to help me in the ring, and you got a couple of idiots. They're going to help you try to hurt me. I know what's but going you're, you're on. But you're calling my you're calling my own son. I know what's going on. You're calling my own son, Grandmaster Sexay, an idiot, and you're calling Dangerous Doug Gilbert, who is the brother of Eddie Gilbert, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, an idiot. What's, what's, what's your kid's name again? Grandmaster what? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, his real name is Brian Christopher. That's right. That's right. But he was Grandmaster Six A uh, well, in the WWE. Yeah, well, you kind of, you kind of like it that he was. What did you name him, Grandmaster? Oh, I, no, Sexay? I, no, I did not name him. No. Who named him? <laughs> I would imagine somebody in the WWE. Was, Who named him? If he was your kid. No, I named, named him. Grand, I named him Brian Master. Christopher. Brian Christopher Lawler is his real name. Okay, and then along comes WWE. Yeah. And you allow them to control your life. I haven't allowed them 
to control my life. No, I don't drive. Oh, wait, a brand wait, new. wait, 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 no, wait, wait. No, I don't wait, drive wait a, a brand wait new. A wait, hey, hey, wait, I don't a drive wait a minute. A brand new Lincoln. Hang on, Hang I don't on drive Jake saw a Charlie. Brand new Lincoln. Hold on. I don't live in a goddamn mansion. Wait a minute, Do Jake I? saw Charlie. I live so, in a chicken house. Well, who was Chainsaw Charlie in the WWE? Who was he? Yeah. He was who I had to be. Oh, why? You let the WWE control your life? Not for very long, goddammit. <laughs> okay. Well, I got to admit, you don't try to live off that persona <laughs> like a lot of people do after they're out of the WWE. You went back to being Terry. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. I'm glad to hear that. I am too. Well, I'm glad that this you know, match. You know, we're on this telephone talking, and you know what the people don't really realize What's that? is that I don't like you. Oh, I think you've made it I clear. I never have liked you. I think you've made that clear. I hope I've made that clear and clean to the people in. Uh, all in, over the world. They're where, listening to this all, all over, over the, the world. world. Let's say it all over the world. That's right. We're all over the world now. I still live in the in in the Panhandle of Texas. That's my heaven. You and you live horses? all over the you world. Own, all over the world is your heaven. Is you that your heaven? Thinking. All over the world. You, I can. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to? Hell, I've been to Africa before. Yeah. Well, good for you. I'm living in Memphis, I wouldn't Tennessee. Wanna, I, wouldn't I don't live be, all over the world. Yeah. Well, like, that's what you said. No, I said you we're said, being heard. You said, we're being heard. No, this you conversation. Said, no, you said that I lived all over the world. No, no, no. I said yeah. we're all over the world right now. No, no. I heard you, Lolo. You said I lived all over the world. I know what you say. No, I did not say that. I said this phone call that you're calling us, but we're being heard all how much over. I'm, how much am I? I'm calling you. I'm paying for this goddamn thing. No, you're not paying. They how much does it cost an hour? Me, on a, on how like, much does AT and T cost an hour? Are you on like a how house much phone in in Texas? You're not even on a cell phone where you have unlimited minutes. You call us collect. I don't have a I don't have a cell phone. What are you like in the back? Are you like in the backwoods out there or something or what? You live Absolutely. on a you really live on a ranch. I live on. I live on a lake now. I live on this nice little lake. And the double cross, I sold it. You did? Yeah, I sold a double cross for just a pittance. Not what it was worth? No. No. Why would you sell? Million. Why would you sell? Why would it that much? 17. 17 million? Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have sold it. I cry every day. So you ha you have you live on a lake now, a beautiful lake that you can look out over, and then you look over at your bank book and see seventeen million dollars in there. I wouldn't cry; I'd be happy. But you're not a happy person, are you, Terry? You're never happy about anything. I don't know if I've ever seen you smile or be happy. You're always angry. You're always upset about because, something. Because because every time that you see me, I'm thinking of you, because I'm seeing you. Oh. That's simple. And whenever I see you, it just, anger just explodes in my body. It does. You know there's one thing you two have in common? What? What? You both have had successful singing careers. Singing, singing careers? Singing careers. Yeah, Jerry, we did a whole podcast about your songs and Terry Funk. Well, I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not questioning that. I know I had a successful singing yeah. career. But Terry Funk had a song. He sung his song. Terry had his own album. Who's that callous chambermaid? What'd she do with that razor blade? She must have misplaced it, I'm afraid. Boys, it's got to be found. Ask her when she cleans my room, what she did with my, my purse. Can't use it, got to lose it, Lulu's back in town. You can tell all your pets, blondes and brunettes. But doop ba do da do da do I just won't be around. Tell the mailman not to call. I won't be back until the fall. 
if I'm coming back at all. Lulu's back in town. What was that? How the hell do you remember all the words to that sorry song? Who wrote that? Well, that's Nanya. Nanya wrote it. Nanya, Nanya who's got that? Damn business. <laughs> Did you really? Did you really put that out on a record? Yes, sir. Great text. Did it? Did it sell? Did it yeah. sell any copies at all? Not many. <laughs> oh my God! What year was that? What year did that song escape? I know it wasn't released. It had to escape. What year did that no, song come out? Uh, whenever I whenever I did an album for Tokyo. Yeah, 1984. Yeah, they can't understand English in the first place. <laughs> they didn't know what they were listening to, did they? 1984, I think it was. How did yeah. you remember that date? Somebody did. Oh, Google. Who said yeah. that? Google. Glenn looked up. He, he looks up. See, he's got a little computer sitting right here in front of him. He looks up everything. Anything you say, he'll look it up. He'll tell you the exact date we had the empty arena match, even though you or I can't remember. Or, uh, I mean, the exact yeah. date we wrestled for the NWA world title in Memphis. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, helping the world become a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, Terry, Terry, you had a song called We Hate School. So here's a 50-year-old man That's talking it. about how he hates school. My teacher don't like my music and she don't like my clothes. Up your nose with a rubber hose. I'd like to Jimmy Hart mate, talked him into doing that. Jimmy Hart wrote that song. That was the, that was the worst song really on worst. the entire album. It was, it was, it was so bad. It was horrendous. But I liked Jimmy, and I put it on there. And actually, it, it was the reason that the, that the album didn't sell to me. <laughs> well, it's a word of mouth. Word of mouth spread quickly that We Hate School was so bad, don't buy the record, right? Yes, it did. It spread quite quickly. <laughs> there was a song called Barbara Stry- Streisand's Nose. That was a uh, song on the album. You know, you seem to be quite interested in that album. How many How many albums did you buy there? You, I didn't buy any. You I was, I was yeah, one well, year how old. How do you know all of this? <laughs> right. You found it on Google? I found it on Google. Google. It's it's all on YouTube. You know what YouTube is, Terry? No, I don't know anything about anything. That's why in the hell do you think you're on my regular land phone here? (laughs) I don't. I don't give a shit about. I don't give a shit about cell phones or anything else. I don't give. I don't care. I want the world to go ahead, and I am outrunning the world right now. What are you going to do? Everybody else is Googling, Googling, uh, schmoozing, uh, whatever they do on those things. They can do all of it. I'm running down the road on my own, and I'm having a great time, and I know where I'm going. I don't need any of Google's goddamn help. Well, what, what are you going to do with that $17 million? Aren't you going to spend thousands on new iPhones and on GPS systems to show you where you're going when you run down the road and, and Google and computers and all that kind of stuff? What are you going to spend that $17 million on? How do you think I got the goddamn $17 million? You sold the ranch? Yeah, I sold the ranch and uh, saved my money. Not like you, Lawler. I saved my money. Own your money. No, I oh, have not. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, no. Oh, no. I've, well, no, I've saved my money. The oh, fabulous Jackie Fargo. When I, first, when I first started in the business. You got, well, what do you got? $500? $500? I'll bet every dollar I'll bet every dollar you got in your pocket. What, what like how much money I carry okay. around on me right now? Yeah, Look, I, I'll bet I, I'll bet you money every dollar you you got it is is in your pocket. And no, it doesn't that's even not. Make a, and that's and not. it certainly makes a bigger bulge in it, in your pocket than your 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 weenie does. <laughs> oh my gosh. On earth. Now we what now we're now we're going to compare how much money each other have. 
You remember Jackie Fargo, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. He always told me, it's not what you make, it's what you save. That's and he exactly was right. right. That's exactly right. And I listened exactly to that. Right I listened to that I advice. To that <laughs> well, I guess we can... We you can, know, I've uh, been on this phone too long. I realize that. I've listened to you too much. You've worn out your I don't want to know as much. All I want to know is I'm coming out there, and I'm going to beat the shit out of you, Lala. No. That's okay. all, Lala. Jerry Lala. The king. I'm the king. Brucey, Jerry baby. Lala. Well, right. we'll see. That coming up this weekend. You Jerry better do it. What's my name? My name Jerry the King Lala, and I am... I am the king. I am the king. Do you have a you maid? There? Do, you have, do you have a maid at your house, Terry? No, oh, I'm chopping up some ice right now. <laughs> I thought maybe that was a maid running a vacuum cleaner or something. No, that can you, was me. Can you afford a house? Can you afford a housekeeper, a maid? Can I afford a maid? Or do you have? Did you oh, sell your yes. ranch and have just a small house that you don't even need a maid? Well, I'd, I'd appreciate it if y'all wouldn't tell anybody or anything like that, but I don't have a maid. What? But I've, I've, I've got a... Huh? <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I don't. I don't. I handle it. I handle yep. it. My wife handles it. Who's going to take care of your I've house while a, you're, while you're going to... I've got a good wife. While you're going to the... you got what? I've got a good wife. Okay, I'm not going to insult your wife like you have done to me in the past. Your wives. Oh yeah. He, now listen to you. Let's put wives onto that. <laughs> that wasn't me that did that one. <laughs> that was an idiot announcer. That was, that was, that that was, was too that easy. Was, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. He had to pop up right with it, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he beat me. He just beat me to it by a second. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's about it. All the time we have for this conversation. Oh, I guess it is, isn't it? There. All right. I'll give. <laughs> I'll get my butt off his phone. Well, I will see you this weekend. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, certainly uh, contesting you at my age. And uh, I think the fans will have a hell of a time there. All right. Terry Funk, thank you for uh, agreeing to be. I think this may be the only podcast you've graced and been on. So I, I appreciate you doing that. Okay. I'm off the air now. Okay, goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. I am the meanest man in professional wrestling. And you're on Lawler's side. I'm not on Lawler's side. And I just don't the, want the trouble with you. The referee's on Lawler's side. You idiots are on Lawler's side. And evidently, the airplane people are on Lawler's side because they informed him that I was coming here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I am going to take Lawler and I'm going to Come on, Terry. All right, Jerry, that was uh, Terry Funk calling in. <laughs> in all his glory. 